For an HIV practitioner who is managing the care of a patient suspected of having opiate cravings, what are some key measures to assure that the patient receives care that properly integrates care for pain with care for related psychosocial issues? The first thing is that you have to think about pain as a complaint and not as a specific diagnosis. There are many different kinds of pain. I'm going to divide pain into two categories chronic pain and acute pain. And then I'm going to divide each of those pains into two other categories. The somatosensory part of pain, the feeling part, and the emotional part of pain, the reaction to it. So if you're stung by a bee um, and you're afraid of bees, it's a very intensely unpleasant experience. If you're a beekeeper like my wife and you get stung by a bee, you feel bad that the bee died. And you carefully pick the bee's body off your arm and flick it and take the stinger out my wife regularly points out to me that I tolerate a lot worse when the medical students learn to draw my blood. It doesn't bother me. So there's both a, some, a sensory part of pain, like the needle going into your arm, and the emotional part of pain, the intense amplification you get from distress related to pain. That occurs with both chronic pain and acute pain. Acute pain is best managed with opiates. If you break your ankle, it's best managed with opiates. If you uh, need surgery, that's best managed with opiates. What opiates do is block your ability to perceive pain sensation some and relieve the distress. Low doses relieve the distress more. Higher doses you get pain blocking. And for an acute pain or an acute injury that's useful. Chronic pain is very different. Chronic pain can be defined as how long you have the pain but it also can be defined as pain where there's been a re-regulation of the nervous system. There's been some change in the way you appreciate pain neuropathic pain, phantom limb pain, central sensitization pain. These are the pains we usually see in patients in an HIV clinic. Occasionally we see acute pain. Someone's hurt something, they have an open wound, they have an ulcer. Those pains, we know how to manage them and most practitioners are very good at it. Chronic pain is much tougher because the patients are clearly suffering but opiates are much less effective for chronic pain. And giving chronic opiates, patients will quickly attenuate to the dose of opiates. So when you talk about pain for a primary practitioner, the first question is, what is the pain? What kind of pain is it? Is it neuropathic pain? Is it a phantom pain? Is it a central sensitization pain? Is it pain caused by the narcotics themselves called opiate-mediated hyperalgesia pain? Those kinds of pains are better managed with um, tricyclic antidepressants, anticonvulsants, anti-inflammatory medicines, and other things that suppress the nervous system's upregulation of the pain. And they're also, it's important to kind of reactivate people. So if you have someone who's dying and who you're just trying to make comfortable, palliation with opiates is very appropriate. But if you have someone who's not dying, they often want to be made comfortable now at the cost of function later. And practitioners need to keep that in mind as they think about pain. Patients very quickly get convinced that they need their pain completely relieved and opiates help convince them of that because they're powerfully reinforcing. So as a practitioner you have to think about how much is o are opiates helping this patient? How much opiate would I give to this person where I know it would be useful? How long am I going to give the opiate? What contract have I made with the patient about the opiate? And what are other modalities that are likely to help? And you can get help with those things. There are lots of people around who are good at managing chronic pain. but Usually, the thing that confounds practitioners, that makes it difficult for them, are patients say their pain is terrible, they express tremendous distress, and they already know what they want, which is opiates. And you know, as a practitioner, that the opiates aren't going to help their pain or are going to make it worse over time, and that puts you in a very awkward position. Particularly awkward now when everybody's talking about patient satisfaction and pain is a vital sign. These have not been very useful things and have promoted a huge opiate misuse epidemic in this country. 90 plus percent of all the oxycodone made in the world is used in this country. The tremendous opiate problem in the United States, partly driven by the idea that people should be made comfortable instead of getting them better. So for a primary practitioner, their reflex is to think carefully about what kind of pain they're dealing with and what's most likely to help the patient function the pressure from the patient and from the culture is to give people whatever they want. And practitioners have to think about risk and benefit when they're thinking about that. Luckily, there's lots of help in treating chronic pain 
and lots of things we know about that do help neuro neuropathic pain, which we see a lot of, central sensitization pain, which we see a lot of, and other kinds of chronic pain.